You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Doctor Who After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Doctor Who After Show. <laughs> oh, guys, I really hope you're watching this live because the, the dance is happening again. Um, <laughs> thing is for doing, and we are here doing another wrap-up of Doctor Who. Um, I am Jenna Bush from Fan Hacking here with... I am Rob Cornett from IGN. Continue dancing. I am Matt Lieberman from No Website. And we have all learned so much about Matt tonight. If you guys... Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys were not listening... Wow, the music is just still going, isn't it? <laughs> it's so loud. Thank you. It's so loud. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, it's, it's been a disaster. Music. You guys... I, this is the thing. We got some tweets that said our mics were on earlier mm -hmm. when we were just sort of chatting with Matt yeah. here, who's having a bit of a time oh. during the holidays. So what we kind of want to know is, what did you hear, y'all? <laughs> Feel free to tweet <laughs> us. Feel free to tweet yeah. us. We'd like to hear. Because uh, you didn't hear anything, right, guys? <laughs> oh, uh, I think they did. They're here to listen to Doctor Who. They don't care about my my relationship Your, issues. It got, and th this is the thing that you it should heated. be. It got heated. It did. It got kind of amazing once the mics were off again and <laughs> I can't tell you what was said but it was kind of yeah. Oh my. On that note, um, we are doing a review of the first half of season seven. Yes. Because yes, of amazing. nothing was obviously on this week and we did not do a classic episode. But I think it's time to do this because the next thing that's going to happen is our Christmas special. Um, Hello, Clara. <laughs> <laughs> creepy. Also, <laughs> Unwarranted creepy. <laughs> the things that are happening in here. I swear we did not have eggnog before we started. Um, but, but seriously, like the next thing is the Christmas special. Obviously, we will not be doing a live show on Christmas, right? No. We will be doing that in the in the future. Right. Um, we will be traveling to the. We future. We will be traveling to the future where we will be recording. This <laughs> but but, um, but yeah, so we thought it would be a good time to go over everything that's happened, and it really it hasn't been that much really because it's only five episodes. Yes. yes. So which I shall name: but Asylum it, of the Daleks, Dinosaurs yeah. on a Spaceship, A Town Called Mercy, The Power of Three, and The Angels Take Manhattan. Which one was your favorite? I know his favorite. That's, so not a, I, <laughs> that's like your favorite, one of your top three of all time now. It is. Yeah. It is that much fun, and it introduced uh, uh, Brian Williams, who is one of love him, who is so easily great. the best companion family member character ever introduced. I will stake my reputation on it. I have Do to agree it. with I that. I have to agree. Yeah, yeah. that's a I good love call. Him. That wasn't my favorite episode, though. What was yours? I think it was Angels Take Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. Because you love seeing the ponds die. No, no, it was hard. <laughs> they didn't really. They didn't really, they didn't really. They didn't really yeah. die. Like they had a whole life and they were ready to leave anyway and whatever. But but no, and but also I liked Asylum of the Daleks. That was yeah. my favorite actually. Asylum of the Daleks was oddly enough my favorite. And I think it's just I thought it was such a cool um conceit. And also I like it. I don't you guys are gonna think I'm a little dark and twisty. We That's already do. We already do. That's because you know me. It's because uh -huh. we've met. Um, but there's something about whenever Stephen Moffat introduces the idea of the dead still speaking, that sort of like that that residue of the essence of the human being still mm -hmm. speaking, it always mm -hmm. kind of gets to me in a way. Like, oh, right, whenever they're like, oh, right, that's when I died. There's something just so creepy about it and works every time. And then also I think that, that Oswin was such an awesome character oh yeah and that the idea of experiencing that kind version of a dalek and that version of a person um kind of living in a fantasy world because they couldn't handle reality i just thought it was like really brilliant and kind of had you can engage with it on multiple levels if you wanted to that was very good yeah. and in a sexy voice. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, for if me, Angels Take Manhattan, and I know people are going to disagree with this because not everyone likes River Song. 
Right. No. Not everyone I likes love her. her. I do too. Yeah. But uh, and I think there was something about the relationship between the two of them and like the writing sweetie on a on a Ming vase and I don't know. I just there was something really I find it very entertaining now that they are married, some of the stuff that happens, which I just I find it very charming. I do too, and I love seeing that also. That's probably one of my I liked them all for the most part but those um the three our three favorites are the three standouts i think but for just just that little bit of edge i think is is what brings it over the edge for me with asylum of the daleks defend your <laughs> episode yeah. sir all right i'll defend my episode i just want to make a couple of points i do love uh i think that in angel take manhattan that was my favorite use of river song thus far at least since season four yeah um when she was introduced i love that kind of screwball element to their uh their interaction and their marriage um and and yeah the darker elements of asylum were really great i do think that he kind of recycled a lot of things from Silence in the Library for sure. The oh, yeah. He does, but those happen to but be that, some of my more favorite episodes. They, yeah. but they still, it was a little recycled. They're good but, beats to recycle. Yeah, but right. I thought they were still effective. And if it had only been those recycled little bits, then I probably wouldn't have liked it as much. But to me, it was that Oswin character and that dealing with the Daleks that we've never seen right. before that brings it. I just thought she was like kind of like a, that was a fascinating conceit to me. Yeah. yeah. Because you know in so many ways I think we all do that in life we sure. sort of construct fantasy worlds for ourselves and we don't deal with what our lives really are when yeah. they're something we don't want to deal with okay now I'm going to take defend the floor your episode. I'm going to defend my oh. episode Dinosaurs on the spa on a Spaceship is a very divisive episode among fans who some of whom felt it was a little too juvenile to which I say suck it because it is that much fun <laughs> I don't care. We like Dark Matt. Yeah. By the yes, way. we really, really do like <laughs> Dark Matt. <laughs> because it was it was so much fun. I loved all the guest stars and and the and the fun characters. I, I loved Nefertiti and the Hunter. I, I loved seeing uh, Argus Filch of Harry Potter as this <laughs> just very completely evil dude. Like just the oh, the gosh. Doctor's giddiness. Uh, it, it was just it was really breezy and fast and light. And to me, it embodied everything that I love about about the show like you know I love I love that we've gotten the chance to go dark and that we we really explore the character and that the relationships on the show are so well defined which you know sometimes you don't get on on a show of this type that you don't get right. on a science fiction show this episode while it didn't it well it didn't really focus on those elements it it brought to me the sense of adventure and fun and comedy uh, and and great effects it was just a wonderfully, wonderfully entertaining hour. It's the kind yeah. of thing that I would show somebody who's never seen the show and been like, you know what, even if they don't get Doctor Who, they're going to have fun when they watch this. Yeah. I'm, look I'm looking forward to, you know, 15, 20 years from now or whatever, you know, me watching that episode with my kids. Like, because I know that, like, even a three-year-old could watch that episode and have a great time and not be bothered. Because dinosaurs. Like, yeah. I feel like I could say something about his future kids, given what we learned earlier today. <laughs> and apparently the entire interwebs oh, learned as well. But I, oh. I think you're right. I mean, I think that what it has is, like, that sense of possibility and whimsy to it, which is, like, mm -hmm. right. And, I mean, it's whimsy dinosaur yeah. soars on a spaceship, which is what we do love. And I think it also kind of embodies what the show does so well which is balances the family element to it um with, with things that and themes that as adults we can also get into yeah. um just you know it i took, guess i guess i like the darkness yeah. i don't know to me <laughs> to me that episode just what, what it was it was like it was me playing in a sandbox with my toys it's the kind of thing that like a little boy would so come sweet. up with we think yeah. you are the cutest thing ever just Except so you know oh, stop well <laughs> did you write that comment on that one episode forever ago when they Which said one? there was an, there was an episode where i had a haircut and someone said oh no I but i remember it attractive and i was chuffed i said I was something nice about chuffed. your hair that day downright chuffed you said yes downright <laughs> well, why, chuffed. why did somebody say that you're well, adorable it's, it's YouTube. People it's, weigh their words it's. on YouTube. You're quite adorable. Thank you. Everyone adorable. at this table is adorable. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> Lord. Okay, so we've talked about our favorite episodes. Yes. yes. And we talked at length about the exit of the ponds. Mm-hmm. But do we want to touch on that again a little bit? Yeah, I still think it was incredibly well done. I still think it was satisfying to people who didn't want them to die tragically. Yeah. It was satisfying to people who were like, okay, finish finish this and don't drag it out. Um, I think it was, it was satisfying for everybody. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. I... I miss them. However, I am so totally jazzed by Jenna Louise Coleman. Yeah. I think she's just, I really am looking forward to everything that she's Everything that she's we've do. seen of her mm-hmm. just makes me more and more excited. She's just cute, <laughs> cute as a button. And we've seen that she's like whip smart and like super fast mm. from how she played well, Oswin. Well, Oswin is. Right. Well, okay. But, th- but that's the thing is like, even if they're not, the same character or even related to each other whatsoever, and I don't necessarily think that they are. Right. It shows her capacity for uh, for chemistry with the doctor, for right. speed. You know, Stephen Moffat knows that this is one of her strengths, and I, I guarantee that he will write to that strength no matter what. Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of why he hired her. He said he wanted somebody who could be as fast as Matt Smith or faster, you yeah. know, yep. and that could meet him. And she really does. And I agree. I think she's just adorable. I Even in the little previews that we saw from from them um, with their introduction into the so trailer yeah. um, and the upcoming Christmas episode, I just thought she was, they have fantastic chemistry. She is completely adorable. I would say this, though. I do hope there is some connection, just because I was so fond of it, to the Oswin character. I do hope that there is. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that this is probably going to be the first companion that people are... I think it was a really smart move to put put her in that first episode because this might be the first companion that people are not quite... Although they've done that before. They've certainly done that before. But we we did have a lot of... Yeah, a um, lot of Americans join the show at season five. Yeah, right. I think so too. So, I mean, I I think I think there's not going to be the resistance to her that we so often see because we're so charmed by her already. Yeah. But I do hope they fulfill the promise and and have her be something we haven't really seen before. Yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. And, and more than just being from the Victorian era. Sure. You know? Right. Well, you know, she has said in interviews, and like I said, we've discussed this before, so this isn't anything like spoilery because we don't know if this is misdirection right. or if she doesn't know, but she has mentioned things like that she hasn't confirmed necessarily that she's human. Right. She hasn't said she isn't. Yeah. She hasn't said, she didn't say there's absolutely no connection between them. She said there might be, there might not be. So we don't know. I, and I'm kind of excited about the possibility for any of those things to be true. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think at this point we should just stop pretending that we're not going to do spoilers and That's talk a very about good point. and just yeah. admit enter the field of speculation. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> where we we talk about some of the things that we know that have been said about the upcoming second half of the yeah. season, mm-hmm. series 7. And and fr- uh, you know, anyone who does not want to hear this should probably tune out now. Although, yep. I mean, you tuned in to a season 7 recap show. Right. So, you probably want to hear it. So, uh, I don't and know join, why you're here. Join in the dialogue. Not. You can you can go ahead and tweet any predictions that you have yes. at us. Yeah, definitely. Um, or any things that you'd like to see more of in yeah. the upcoming season of Bef- Before we jump in, I just I do want to say that I think the first half of the season was the most creatively rich yep. five episode like like consecutive run of episodes, I think of any since Moffat took the helm. Totally. Um, Father Wizard actually said this was his favorite of the new series, favorite oh, like, really? five-episode run. Yeah. yeah. It's, it was really, really strong, and if that's any indication, the rest of the season is going to be great. We have so many things to look forward to. Yep. We have uh, we have another Neil Gaiman episode, episode <gasps> 12. So oh, excited. Oh, the so last fire. Cyberman. Guys, okay, so l- l- let's talk about this. Yeah. Here's one thing, and I want to put this on the table. Stephen Moffat said, like, they, there is near zero episodes this whole season seven that they have kind of had budgetary cut. Like, they spent right. all their money. There's nowhere where they really saved money on an episode. Yeah. They're going to continue on with this, like, movie poster thematic where mm-hmm. every week it's going to be another movie poster episode like we've talked about before, like the dinosaurs on a spaceship and, right. you know, the cowboy episode. So it's going to be a modern urban thriller, mm-hmm. um, an under siege storyline, a futuristic alien planet, which is kind of like 
that's your show, so that's a little <laughs> yeah, that's not surprising. Um, a, a cracking good ghost story, mm. if we're told. Mm. Um, the journey to the center of the TARDIS, which we cannot wait. I want to oh see the pool. TARDIS. Show, show me the pool. A show us the pool. Drama. And then a fanboy, fanboy, fantastic is what he says, basically. I'm, right. I'm paraphrasing. Yep. Finale. But here's here's my question to you guys. Yeah. So we're saying we've loved these five episodes. I have. The only piece that is missing for me, and this is just what I like in my television, is an overarching storyline. Mm. I want, I do want that. I think that instead of necessarily one strong story, we've gotten several threads. Right, right. right. We have, we have the question, we have the Shakri, which were mm-hmm. introduced yeah. in The Power of Three. Yeah. Um, and their we potential return. We haven't dealt return. with the question much, though. No, we haven't. And that's that's definitely, that's going to be the 13th episode. Yeah. Right, right. The also, big, big, big. We have no details on the 13th episode uh, other than the fact that it will likely deal with the question. I literally right. just, why have I spilled water all over myself? That's oh, you have a hole in your chin, too? That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Warwick Davis will be guest starring War- this season, and I love him. Yes, he's going to be in Neil Gaiman's episode. Yep. He's playing a character named Porridge, <laughs> which I just think is hilarious. Porridge and the yes. Cybermen. Porridge and the Cybermen. Yes, well, and just throwing this out there, um, Willow, his his major breakthrough yeah. role other than Wicket and The Return of the Jedi is now on Blu-ray. Nice. I know. Mm-hmm. Wasn't that the most amazing news? So excited. What's your favorite Willow moment? Quick. Yeah. Oh, God. What isn't my favorite? Come I on. Love you, him. You're such a Willow fan. You talk about Willow all the time. Do I? Yes. Do, Do I you? Really? Does she? No. Uh, <laughs> I'm a, I mean, I, I really like it. I just yeah. haven't. <laughs> I, I enjoy Willow, too. Okay, so I, I don't know. I mean, I... I, I'm reserving judgment, I guess, but I think there are things that were set up to be fulfilled that have not really been fulfilled yeah. yet. There were the, the Dalek threads from Asylum of the Daleks, namely that they were turning into Daleks, and then right. that just kind of right. stopped. Yeah. Right. And there's, I mean, even the setups from season six, entire storylines that have been essentially abandoned. Yeah. Well, you know, I think part of it was the fact that, you know, having Amy and Rory leave. Right. Then became the focus. It became the right. entire first half of the season, except for I think the first episode, um, was all about Amy and Rory and their how deep their connection is, and then starting to pull away right. and all that. So that was the big thing. So I'm wondering if in the second half of the season, and really because of this, I think the season was extremely split. It's like having two different seasons. Yeah. yeah. So I think. Um, now that we have a new companion, maybe we'll be able to settle into that again right. and start talking about some of the things that we haven't answered yet. That's kind of my hope. And I think that a series that has, you know, especially here, um, and I, I'm kind of curious, but, but especially like on network television here, one of the things that I think that the networks always want to insist on is that things are serialized in the, or not, pardon me, or are episodic, episodic that are yeah. not totally serialized so that versus on cable where you really can be serialized, right. but that are episodic so that new viewers can tune in and, right. and understand what's going right. on. But a show, I think that mastered that balance eventually it went through some bumpy periods it was fringe yeah and i think yeah. it really mastered how to be how to both blend the at two. the same time and i would like to see that happen for doctor who a yeah. little bit more because i've loved these episodes too if you start to thread in some of those elements it's just gonna it's gonna okay. be the perfect TV i'm gonna show. say i'm gonna say a couple <laughs> things one of which may be a little controversial Uh-oh. that's gonna argue oh with me I are am we shocked? dark mat dark are mat shocked? <laughs> hey hey i love dark mat no come on Bring come on. on all right first of <laughs> come all come on no. first of all <laughs> this sh- this show is not fringe this show is not fringe its audience is different the way we digest it is different people absorb this show and they join it by watching it through netflix by watching it through amazon something like that or being introduced to it by a friend they don't have to worry about the same rules as something like fringe they don't have to worry about being episodic because it is one of the biggest hits in britain and globally uh, so I think it's it's it is a purely creative decision. Right. Last but season, that doesn't mean that it wouldn't be the right creative choice to blend both of those. I know. To blend being serialized they and episodic. They did last season. They did. They did last season, and I would I would venture that it was one of the weakest 
I don't in, agree. in in recent memory. I, don't I think agree there were at some all. strong episodes, fight, but as fight, a, fight. as a season, you're as wrong. one whole piece, you're wrong. I can't sit down and watch season six. I think you're absolutely wrong. I I think they did not blend the two last season. <laughs> what he did is he ventured into being serialized, and now he stepped away from it. And I think that the audi- the Doctor Who audience rejected that because it was new and unusual for them. And they weren't used to it. But I do I absolutely don't agree. That that season had some of the most interesting ideas presented that we've ever seen. So I absolutely in no way agree with you that that's the weakest season. It had some of the very most interesting developments for these characters because a serialized show can develop characters through a trajectory in a way an episodic show cannot. So all I'm saying is that aesthetically speaking, I'm not I hey, I'm not arguing with blended. you on that point. That is also, not that Matt is Matt is asking Matt um the Dunlop. Geek Mac is yeah. asking what happened to the doctor was erased from history. That's not been brought up. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, well, the doctor the doctor was erased from history. Yep. But we've not really explored the consequences of that too much. It was sort of yeah. mentioned a little in Dinosaurs on the Spaceship. Yeah. Yes. It was, was mentioned, it. but it hasn't yeah. really been explored. It hasn't been. Yeah. But yeah, Which, like I it, said. It uh, doesn't make any sense because Kate Stewart knew who he was. Exactly. Exactly. In in episode four. Yeah. I mean, I think, um, well, first of all, I enjoyed I enjoyed your battle. That was very entertaining. I sat back. I relaxed. I had a cup of coffee. It was great. Um but um, I, I had coffee. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think I think there's something about this. See, guys, if you if you're only listening to this on the podcast, they're grinning at each other. It's adorable. Um, oh yeah, we. It's one big love fest. It is. It is. Yeah. More so, hugs. Oh, they're hugging. Ah, oh, they're hugging. <laughs> <laughs> but I I think that. So much was, fo- like I said, so much was focused on Amy and Rory and their departure and mm-hmm. what a big deal that would be for fans yeah. that a lot of it sort of, a lot of the other stuff just sort of disappeared. There just wasn't the kind of real estate that the show required to yeah. really deal with all that stuff. And, and Stephen Moffat isn't going to rest on his laurels just because he's got a big event like Companions leaving. Right. You know, to not introduce new ideas to the series. So right. obviously some of the things, you know, we can just accept that they are. There are always going to be loopholes because this is Doctor Who and there will always be lo- loopholes. Time travel is not a perfect science <laughs> in this universe anyway. Can we, can we, can we agree on that? I don't think it's ever depicted as being perfect science, time travel. It's all kinds of say, dangerous things happening. I would say looper's pretty it's, perfect. Oh, gosh, you want to have a looper debate? That's, that's a <laughs> that's whole a other... That's By the way, I place. love that film, but yeah. and I love Ryan Johnson, but we can have yeah. a whole debate about how imperfect that actually is. Can I just really, really quickly? Yes. Uh, because I know we talked briefly about yeah. how you felt about The Hobbit last week, because I right. totally saw it last night in 48 frames per second, and 48 frames per second is the bomb and anyone who says otherwise is wrong oh honey <laughs> it's the bomb I- <laughs> five minutes five minutes into oh, the honey. movie five minutes into the movie i was 100 locked in and i was loving it throughout the rest of the ride the only issues that that movie really has are in its script and its structuring Oh, boom. boom. Dear. Later. I wrote a blog post, if anyone is interested, on girlmeetslightsaber.blogspot.com about my thoughts on 48 frames, which I will not go into now, but How I did. How did you meet your lightsaber? <laughs> See, that's just there's so many dirty jokes that just came into my head right now, and yep. I can't say them. Family show. I like I like setting you up for those because you can't deal with it. But, I can't at the, say but at the same time, you get so excited by them that it will just completely derail the show. It totally does. Speaking of derailed show, <laughs> we we actually Jenna and I unfortunately we have to go watch Homeland so that we can review it, which is Aww. which which brings us to this moment that we can tell you. That AfterBuzz has all kinds of programs that you can tune into. Indeed, indeed it does. Over 50. And guys, we really do appreciate you guys leaving us comments and liking us and giving us nice ratings. We don't appreciate the bad ratings, just the nice ones. We do appreciate we, the nice comments, I appreciate. Yeah. I appreciate the bad ones because it lets me know that there are mean people out there who have nothing better to do than to trash people who only want to entertain you and educate you about a show that we all Dark love. Dark Matt. <laughs> I want you to give me a cookie. I have so many feels. <laughs> I want you to give me a cookie. 
Maybe the holidays could be. have been rough here at After Buzz. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, they have. Holidays. Continue to be. Um, but we are heading towards the very joyous Christmas special, which, as yes. we mentioned, we will not be obviously here on Christmas Day. Yes. But we yeah. will return, I think, probably the we, in, in the new year. In the new year, year, yeah. And we'll tweet out about it. So please do follow us all on Twitter. Yes. I am at Jenna Bush, B U S C H, like the beer, not the president. And you can I, find me on Fanhattan.com and Cocktails with Stan on World of Heroes. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'm J R O C. That's at J R O T H C. And you can find my work at IGN.com. I am at Matt Lieberman, L I E B E R M A N. You can find online sketch comedy at uh, YouTube.com slash V L Y T V. Uh, if you're in the Los Angeles area and you love live comedy, come out to Danger Room Friday nights uh, at 8801 Cashio Street at 8 p.m. It is a free show, free live improv, Woo! two hours, uh, and a live improv jam, free beer, free drinks, so please uh, please join us for that. Everyone yes. send Matt a cookie. You should send Matt a cookie. He's had a hard time. A and you should go enjoy his comedy. Hey, listen, tweet us, and if, we, if there's anything that we didn't talk to, we'll pick it up another time about this Absolutely. season. Absolutely. Yes. From Bing.com, <laughs> executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. <laughs> Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.